what's your reaction to all of this? Why they <clears throat> they're not worse. Uh, I, I, hold on, wait a minute. What is all this yelling and screaming for after the game? You had 60 minutes to put your foot on somebody's throat. You had 60 minutes to yell and scream. And you wait till you get to the locker room? Why are you yelling and screaming at me? Mm. Buffalo needed that. Mm. They needed that energy. They needed that passion. And now you want to come in here and everybody tough. Mm. Yeah, crying. There ain't no crying in football. Mm. What you crying about? I want to take what he said last first. Mm -hmm. He said he was always taught about adversity. Jerry, you do terrible in adversity. You lose one, you lose to the one lost Patriots. You want to fire the head coach. Yep. You get beat on Thanksgiving in your building. Mm. And now you give the coach a vote of confidence. Mm. You see, Skip, look, when things start to go sideways, Jerry goes sideways with it. Skip, I told you, and I said this the other day, he's more fan than what we call a true owner. Because true owners doesn't ride the wave. The, you know it's going to be ebbs and flow during the season. There's going to be highs. And when it's high, Jerry's at the top of the wave. We're going to the Super Bowl. But when they low, I got too much talent. I put too much into this for me to worry about this. What? No, 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 no. Skip, it's not. The press conferences that Jerry uses, Skip, those are his therapy sessions. Because this is his opportunity to vent, to get exactly what he's thinking off his chest. And the longer you talk, I've never heard in all my life, and been around it for a long time, the owner speak for 25 minutes after the game. That was his session, but it's free. See, normally you go speak to get on somebody's couch and talk that low. You got to pay for that, Skip. Mm. Jerry gets to do this every, after every game. Hey, he, and don't forget, he had already just spoken indoors, behind closed doors to the team. Right. Okay, so you don't hear that either. Exactly. Yeah. So we, but this is his therapy session that he gets an opportunity to vent. He gets an opportunity to share what's going on and what his thought process is. But here's the thing, Skip. You know this. The longer you talk, the more likely you to have a slip-up. And I think last week, the more he talked, the more he's like, the coaches are under my pre pre uh, preview, pervy. Mm -hmm. uh, I can fire. I can hire. Do all this. He said some things, and that's why he backtracked and said what he said yesterday. Because it's hard for me to believe that you want to fire Jason Garrett after losing to the Patriots. Ain't no shame in losing to the Patriots. No matter what you think, out coached or whatever, there's no shame in losing to them. But you lost to Buffalo at home, and then you're like, he got, I got his back, he got mine. I'm, I'm surprised that Jerry does this all the time, Skip, because Jerry's been in this. He brought the team in what year, Skip, 88, 89? Nine. 89. So 30 years, Jerry has been the owner of the Dallas Cowboys. So 30 years, he understands they're going to be good, they're going to be bad. But you, what you really don't do is that you don't ride that. Fans do this. I'm done with the Cowboys. Skip Bayless does this. Zeke has a bad game, throws his jersey in the trash. Zeke eats again, he digs the jersey out of the trash, and he puts it on. That's Skip Bayless. By the way, the jersey is still in the trash. No, no, no. You, yeah. you need to throw that boy in the trash. Mm. That's what you need to do. Mm. But we're going to talk about him a little later, Skip mm -hmm. Bayless. I'm not surprised uh, Jason Garrett is safe, even though when it came out yesterday, if he lose to Buffalo, he could be fired on Friday. I said, Jason's not going anywhere because he's too emotionally connected to, to uh, Jason. Skip, he wasn't emotionally connected to Wade Phillips. He didn't grow – Wade – Jason came up in that organization. He was the backup to Troy when they were winning Super Bowls, and he views him differently than he viewed any other coach because he really looks at him like a, a fourth child. He got, <laughs> you know, he got biological kids, but – the closest he came, Jason Garrett is it. That so is I, true. I knew Jason Garrett was not going anywhere. Jared, Skip, you, you say things that during emotion. You get angry. You get upset. Mm -hmm. You might say things. You're like, why did I say that? And that's why they always tell the players, take 30 minutes after the game, decompress before you go to the microphone. But Jared don't heed that advice, Skip. The moment he walks down up at that box and he got that security detail, detail with him, he goes straight to a podium and you can start talking. It's not even a podium. He just lets everybody surround him, uh, yeah, and he yeah. just gushes. Yeah, he wait. You know? Is everybody here? He wait. Everybody, he looking right. Yep. Everybody, you, you right? Okay. Here we and, go. He, and he starts going. Yep. So, Skip, I'm not surprised. And Jerry's right. Everything they have that they need to, to accomplish, win the division, you got a home game, anything mm -hmm. can happen. But I said this at the beginning, Skip. I didn't feel the Cowboys were going to make the playoffs because I didn't think they were going to win the division. I still believe the Eagles will. And because of what transpired, you got two teams that are not – uh, the Packers and the uh, Vikes are 8-3 and three in the same division. And you got a 10-1 and, and a 9-2 and two You're team. You're just wasting your breath on that. Go on. So, Next with, point. 
Yeah, it's division or bust, obviously. Uh, no, you yeah. bust. Yeah. You went belly up okay. yesterday. Okay. And stop. Hey, can you do me a favor? When I, I, I'm not no, doing no. I haven't even spoken no, yet. I want you to do me a favor. When you tweet, can you add me so people can stop sending me your t- tweets? Would you do me a favor and quit reading what people are saying to you during the game? No, they're not saying that. letting they're them sitting... shape your opinion. How do you shape my opinion? I, I don't read any of that. No, I don't care. But you listen I don't to care the, what you but tweet. You listen to the I don't so- care about anything. You listen to the sound, mm. and they shape what you think of Dak Prescott. No, they do Yeah, not. yeah, dude. That's why you listen to the sound. So you're saying Tony Romo over-defended Dak Prescott yesterday? There was not, I, there, I don't think you so. You can't defend the indefensible, mm. oh. but somehow you find a way to. Mm. Tell me when you're finished. Take it away. My turn. Just quick points of order about Mr. Sharp across the table. Once again, you were really wrong about your Cowboy pick because you picked the Buffalo Bills to lose hugely yesterday mm-hmm. to the Cowboys. Yep. 31 to 17, just as you picked the Cowboys to win at New England the previous week. But your logic yesterday, you told me, quote unquote, on yesterday's show that the Buffalo Bills are even bigger frauds than the Dallas Cowboys. And I was sad. Even bigger I was, frauds. I was gr- gravely mistaken. Mm, gravely. Really wrong. But you know what, Skip? Unlike Jerry, I'm not going to cry about being wrong about this one. I said I'm actually I'm happy. The 9-3 and three Buffalo Bills are clearly way better in every way, shape, or form than the Dallas Cowboys, including coaching, which I will oh, get to in just goodness. a moment. Now, I told you yesterday sitting right in this chair, that that game against the Buffalo Bills was make or break for my 2019 Dallas Cowboys. This would be the defining moment. And I believe yesterday completely broke my football team. I believe that this team has become a talented but broken football team that has lost its confidence, lost its mojo, lost whatever little momentum it had off those easy early season victories over, as you said, bad football teams. Yes. And has, has ultimately just lost its winning edge and its way. This team no longer has any idea how to win football games. This team continues to make lots of plays, but can't make the plays the winning plays. Meaningless plays. The, you can say meaningless. I will give you that. But... I was very wrong about the 2019 Dallas Cowboys. They are not going to win the division. They are not going to the playoffs. They are done, D-O-N-E, done after yesterday. Yesterday was the worst loss of the year. It was even worse to me than the Green Bay loss in which they fell behind 31-3 to at home. Worse than the But Jets. did roar back. This was the worst loss because this was the first time they just got their asses kicked at home. What? They got them kicked at home because they gave up after a roaring to a 7 0 lead, as I predicted. Get up to the they great they will just wanted. roar out of the gate. Yes! And then they looked around and said, are we there yet? Is that enough? Does that do it? Did we just make the play? No, you didn't make the playoffs because that team over there is resilient and tough mentally and physically. And here came the Bills, and there went Dallas because Buffalo scored 26 unanswered points. Mm. That was the worst loss because they just flat out lost that game. It's indefensible from start to finish. So I'm here to tell you this team has so lost its way that there is no way it's going to go a week from last night to Chicago and win that game against the Bears, who I watched beat the Lions. Barely, but they beat them. They're not going to win that game. They're not going to come home and beat the Rams at home, even though the Rams are struggling, you can argue, even more than the Cowboys are. That's correct. But somehow Jared Goff has had the Cowboys number, and I believe he'll have it again. And finally, there is absolutely no way that I think The Cowboys can even go to the lowly Eagles, the Beagles, as I call them, and win the big showdown game on, what is it, December 22nd, Mm -hmm. because what evidence do I have of this? This team has yet to beat any team with a winning record. Not one time. I have no evidence that they can right the ship or flip the switch, as Jerry's saying, this is going to be the greatest story ever told. Baloney it is. It's over. Because look at what the Eagles have left. The easiest closing schedule in the National Football League. Look look at what happens. The Eagles get to go to the Dolphins. 
Then they come home to play the Giants. Then they go to the Redskins. Then they get the Cowboys at home. And then the Giants, at the Giants. They're going to win out. We take it one at a time. How can they not win out? So I'm here today to congratulate Shannon Sharp and his Philadelphia Eagles. You just won the NFC East. It is over. No buy. It is done. Without buying what you're selling, it is over. I'm not selling anything. (laughs) I'm just telling you. I'm just opening my heart. You can call me a psycho crazed fan, and I am because I threw Dax jersey in the trash last year, but I fished it out yeah, because he earned me. You should have put it back out. in there yesterday. Yeah, well, did you do that? We'll talk about that. No, I did not because the truth is that Dak Prescott's really all this team has had all year. I've told you this about 50 times. Well, that ain't on this much. Show. If, all well, he, if all they got is him, it ain't much. And the irony of what we're saying here is. The only reason that my Cowboys are still on some sort of life support, some some meaningless, weird life support, is because the Eagles, starting with Carson Wentz, have been so shockingly awful. Carson Wentz has regressed. Carson Wentz is not as good as Dak Prescott anymore. Maybe at one point it was at least a competition, but that's all. I can't over. tell right now. Well, well I, I can. I can show you a whole lot of numbers on that one. Carson Wentz is a disaster, but he's less of a disaster than my team is. And the only reason my team is on life support is because your secondary was so decimated all year, but it's starting to come back mm-hmm. together, starting to get healthy. So I will give you this. Your defense is much better than my defense is at this point because my defense is way overrated and it has been all year. My pass rush featuring Demarcus Lawrence, D-Law, $100 million man, it's way overrated because it's so wildly inconsistent. You'll see a flash. What did I just tell you? They'll make a play here or there. Oh, look at that. Look at Robert Quinn. Look at Michael Bennett. And then what? Then it will go for two quarters and you won't even hear from it anymore. Nope. Demarcus Lawrence is way overpaid at $100 million. What? Just the way my offensive line is way overpaid all across the board. They don't play up to their contracts. Not one of them does. Why I say, that's dominating. They can't block for the run. They cannot protect Dak Prescott consistently. You don't see a full game of dominant run blocking, dominant protection. It it just breaks down like crazy. They look like a sieve about half the plays in the game. I'm sorry. And we can, I'm going to get to Ezekiel Elliott in a little bit here, but he's not worth $90 million. He's not a $90 million running back. If you only give him 12 carries a game, he can't show you what he can do. We'll talk about that because he had two big carries early and then, I don't know, he was gone. What about those two carries in the second half? What two carries? Exactly. That's all he had in the second half was two. Well, I'm going to get to that soon because he's still way overrated. No, oh, your quarterback is. My quarterback has been the only bright spot, and it's hard to defend my quarterback because – Well, you're trying really hard. He is now ninth worst in the league, which is not t- the, the bottom, but he's ninth worst in, in turnovers. Ah. So, total turnovers, hold up. that's, but that's you, hard but to you, overcome. But, hold up. And yesterday he was bouncing to him, throwing the ball at Zeke's feet. Well, he's the, not as bad as that guy is. Your guy hit the D lineman mm. in the belly mm. with a pick. Mm-hmm. But that was Jason Garrett's fault mm-hmm. because he was on the sideline clapping, Gene. You ain't know that. That was his fault. What about the strip sack? What are you doing with the ball? I thought you protect the ball in your hand. You in the pocket, Skip. This is actually the first time that's happened all year. No, that did not see the rookie from the University no, of Houston that, that, behind him. That's the first time. Mm-hmm. It, that's the first time they lost it. Mm-hmm. It's happened, but no, if you don't lose it, then they, don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't, go ahead, go ahead, make it. Okay, so. I I want to be clear about this. I want to restate my position on Jason Garrett. I said all the way back to after the 2013 season, I'd seen enough of Jason Garrett. So that's on the old show on ESPN. I was on the record after two eight and eights and a a little half season replacing Wade Phillips. That was enough. Not a head coach, too vanilla, too uninspiring, too meat and potatoes, too conservative, too much play not to lose. I'm done with Jason Garrett. That's a long time ago. So I've had to live with him all this way. Mm -hmm. And the only metallic silver lining to last night was that was good night for Jason Garrett because, yeah, he's going to stay afloat the rest of the year because Jerry loves him like a son. But he will be gone after this year. So that's the only positive takeaway from yesterday was that was the end of Jason Garrett. I'll be glad. You know why? And yet I told you also last Monday of this this week Mm -hmm. that I would have fired him on Monday following the New England loss 
only to shake up the locker room. It needed a jump start. It needed to be kicked in the butt with so, such a shocking change. Elevate Chris Richard, the head coach. Oh, that, after that, that defense, what it okay, did yesterday? I'm just saying you need some new voice, some new some new look yeah, up there at the podium. Yeah, Chris Richard voice is not even resonating with his defense. It's going to resonate through the whole team. Okay, well, you got Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.